Mitchell Dillman is a Pikes Peak area artist who's developed a loyal online following for his sculpture and custom-made log furniture pieces. His how-to tutorials and build-your-own log furniture kits ship all over the country. Despite his success, though, Dillman's do-it-yourself business model has struggled to stay in the black amidst the rising cost of living in Colorado Springs. And once again, raising the question of artist survival in an age of urban revitalization. Arts District producer Kate Perdoni has more. Gentrification. It's a word often mentioned in Colorado as rapid growth permeates the nooks and changes previously kept cultural treasures. What side is the artist on? And how does an artist who requires workspace maintain a living when real estate rises and cities experiencing rapid growth? Mitchell Dillman found himself on the wrong side of this equation, the lease on his woodworking studio at a sawmill in Colorado Springs and his rent at home both skyrocketed. He packed up shop and relocated about 40 minutes from the city. And it came at a time when I was experiencing some of the coolest stuff in my life, you know, the art on the streets. This is the one Aspires at Amazing. quarter scale and the benches at, at uh, John Venezia City Park, the community park. And so it was real bittersweet for me to be able to put those out into my community and be well received knowing that I'm not going to be able to live here anymore. I can't afford the rent. It's, it's been emotional. You know, I've done so much work here. This is my home. When I was a child, I, I used to come into this, this yard. My father had some business dealings with the gentleman that started this, this yard. So I've been coming in here ever since I was literally um, in my mom's arms. It was a bustling place. Many people worked here and saws running and sawdust. It may have really impacted me to the point that I continue to work with the wood. All my life, I, I aspired to be an artist. When you can't seem to get traction as an artist, I think a lot of guys end up in construction. But all along, in the back of my mind, I wanted to be making art. And so when, that, when the economy crashed in 08 and, and I found myself out of work, I, I really used that as my excuse. In 2011, Mitchell began selling furniture, sculptures, online tutorials, and custom log furniture kits. His business grew as the do-it-yourself market trend came to life, fueled by the internet. Hey, what's going on? One of the key elements to my operation was setting up a website that's a how-to website. I had a bunch of questions about some of the hardware we're using. Thought today would be the perfect time to answer those. So one of the questions I get asked all the time is about these adjustable feet that we use. The main focus for me was to be able to learn how to utilize the internet just like any other tool. Say hello to Kate Perdoni. She's with PBS, Rocky Mountain PBS. Hi there. She's here to do an interview, guys. So as we move, you know, I know that I can continue to use the internet I appreciate you to drive my business. Be sure to click subscribe. Be on the lookout for more videos coming soon. Adding to his resourcefulness, Mitchell often uses timber harvested from local burn scars, the result of nearby wildfires in 2011 and 2013. His work with this recycled wood reflects the unity of his community. Because of the local fires that we had, the Waldo Canyon and the Black Forest Fire, that really pushed me further into the art. Because of the amount of resources that we had at our doorstep, I felt compelled to find really more creative ways to use the wood. Despite his innovative approach and millions of YouTube views, Mitchell found himself competing against the rising costs of a growing city. We're seeing a lot of growth in, in Colorado Springs, and that's everything from um, just an influx of population, people that are seeing that Colorado Springs is a great place to live. We're really starting to recognize the value of arts in our community and the value of retaining artists in our community. Housing prices are, are definitely going up. It does make it challenging um, to stay in the community. The increases that I've seen in my rent has it, made it where I can't, I'm not going to be able to survive. When a city says they appreciate their artists and that they respect and want to, you know, push that forward, then, then they should follow that up with doing more than just saying.
The Downtown Development Authority of Colorado Springs is doing more than just saying. They're partnering with ArtSpace, a national developer of affordable live and work housing units for creatives and their families. ArtSpace is a development company that's based out of Minneapolis and uh, they've actually been working a lot throughout Colorado. And affordable housing is something that, you know, communities have always needed to, to provide. Um, not everyone is, you know, making median incomes. An ArtSpace survey pinpointed need for a multi-use creative space that could result in up to 70 units of affordable artist housing downtown. And really was showing that Colorado Springs was a great community that um, needed to preserve housing for artists. Art space housing units may include amenities such as common spaces, a gallery, or a performance venue. The complex could be at the cutting edge of the city's move to retain local talent. And it's an exciting place to be. We definitely are seeing um, a lot of positive trends in Colorado Springs. Growth is a good thing, um, but you also need to manage it well. And so I think getting ahead of, of those challenges will really position us well to, to grow sustainably for a long time. I feel like our city has the ability to step up right now and do something to show the world that other cities could do this. Let you guys know what was going on around here. We're starting to get moved in, as you can see. Meanwhile, Mitchell is settling in to his new rural home with the hope that a lower cost of living will lead to higher profits. Be sure to check out Mitchell's website to see more sculptures and furniture at MitchellDillman.com.